the first half of the 20th century, travel by tram was part of life for the people of Sydney and Newcastle. When you travelled to school, you went by tram. When you travelled to work, you went by tram. When you travelled to the beach, to the races, to the Easter show, you went by tram. With 180 miles of route and a fleet of 1,400 trams, Sydney had the second largest tramway system in the British Empire. The trams of Sydney and Newcastle provided a frequent and dependable service, and by the standards of the day, quite fast. Express trips introduced a vivid expression to our language, shooting through like a Bondi tram. Come with us now on a nostalgic journey as we relive the memories of the great days of trams in Sydney and Newcastle. Sydney's first tram was this horse tram, which ran in Pitt Street from 1861 to 1866. Steam trams came to Sydney in 1879, marking the beginning of the permanent network. The first trailer cars were double-deckers, like this replica. Cable trams started in 1886, running from Milsons Point to Ridge Street, North Sydney, and later from the city to Edgecliffe. Electric trams were used experimentally between Waverley and Randwick in 1890, followed by permanent installations in the 1890s between North Sydney and Mossman and from Edgecliff to Rose Bay. Electric trams began to flourish with the opening of the line along George Street in 1899. The overhead wiring was supported by ornamental poles in the centre of the roadway. The tramway department had two experimental double-deck electric trams and in 1907 this film was taken from the front of one of these trams travelling southwards along George Street. Watch the daredevil cyclist at lower left. Approaching King Street, a tram can be glimpsed crossing on the Watson's Bay line, recently converted from cable operation. The centre poles were removed from George Street in 1908. Ahead on the right is the Queen Victoria building. Rapid growth in traffic led to extension of the electric tramway system to other streets. This is Pitt Street, also taken in 1907. The film, Sydney's Wonderful Tramway System, was made in the 1920s when Sydney's trams were at the height of their popularity. Ferries crowd the wharves at Circular Quay and passengers in their hundreds swarm across the road to board trams for the ride uptown. left a tram departs Young Street on an Elizabeth Street run. At top left a tram swings out of Loftus Street ready to begin the journey up Pitt Street. In the centre trams are heading along tracks which lead to George Street. Much of this film is believed to have been taken at Easter 1926. Very intensive services were provided from Railway Square and from Circular Quay to the showground for the Royal Easter Show and to Randwick Racecourse. Virtually every type of tram then in use in Sydney can be seen in this film. At left, ladies in frilly dresses climb aboard a coupled set of O-class trams. A pair of P-class cars Sydney's last and finest toast rack trams which were being delivered when this film was made. The waiting shed in the centre of Railway Square with signal box on top has been preserved at the Tramway Museum at Loftus.
Randwick Racecourse provided the busiest tramway traffic in Sydney. On race days in the 1920s, more than 400 trams were used to handle crowds to and from the racecourse. This huge fleet of trams was needed to clear crowds such as these after the last race. Trams moved through without stopping. It was a case of the quick and the left behind. The elaborate station at the racecourse had six platforms and was similar in scale to a substantial railway station. Trams were drawn from depots all over the network to operate these special services and a number of streets in the Redfern and Moore Park areas had tracks laid especially for racecourse traffic. At the corner of Anzac Parade and Dacey Avenue, a succession of trams heads back from Randwick. Between the racecourse and Cleveland Street, a third track, visible here at bottom right, was provided on the western side of Anzac Parade. The Royal Easter Show provided another big job for the tramways. A pair of LP-class trams arrives at the showground. The LPs were entering service in the 1920s as rebuilds of L-class cars. coupled set of O-class cars unloads followed by a coupled set of P's. As at Randwick Racecourse, trams were lined up in large numbers in readiness for the return journey. Crowds leave the show to go home. The trams provided an efficient and quick way to reach Central Railway or the Quay. With the ability to handle crowds such as these, Sydney truly had a wonderful tramway system. By the 1920s, cars and buses were beginning to affect patronage on the trams and traffic congestion was becoming a reality. Anzac Parade Junction at the intersection of Cleveland Street and Anzac Parade was the junction for the routes to Circular Quay and Railway Square. In addition, trams from the showground, cricket ground or sports ground joined Cleveland Street. As these pictures show, traffic conditions were at times chaotic. traffic situation approaches gridlock. At Railway Square, an O-class tram turns into Key Street, bound for the ride line. These passengers have arrived from the showground or the racecourse and are changing to trams for the western suburbs. At the bottom of the picture, two paper boys notice the camera. A couple and their young family at lower left head for home after a day at the show. This is a demonstration of the features of the then new P-Class design. 
Concertina doors and drop windows were modern design features, allowing the tram to be fully enclosed in winter, but open to the weather in summer. The ability to quickly re-rail a tram which had come off the tracks, or to tow away one which had broken down, was important when tram traffic was as busy as it was in the 1920s. First, the tram is lifted by the winch at the rear of the lifting wagon, Next, hydraulic jacks are used to lift the tram. wagon could also tow a tram in an emergency, although usually a defective car was towed by the nearest available tram or by a breakdown tram, of which there was generally one at every depot. In this demonstration, the tram is being hauled towards the gate of Randwick workshops. Centennial Park is in the background. this picture are trams at the McMahon's Point Terminus, closed when the Harbour Bridge was opened. A few days before the opening of the bridge in March 1932, this tram made a trial crossing, climbing from Wynyard towards the tunnel portal. Originally intended for railway use, the tram tracks were on the eastern side of the bridge. Soon after this trial run, the bridge was opened with massive crowds and trams. Arrival of the first corridor tram in 1933 a major change from the footboard or toast rack design prompted Movie Tone to make a survey of trams around Australia. A display for VIPs in Bridge Street Yard at the corner of Phillips Street. New trams on the line from Adelaide to Glenelg. cable trams in Elizabeth Street, Melbourne. Most of the sound from these newsreels has been lost, but in a few moments we'll hear a fragment of recorded sound of cable trams at the corner of Burke and Spring Streets. Electric trams in Swanston Street. Brisbane, Edward Street. North Quay. Australia's last double deck trams in Hobart. Perth. Sydney's last government owned steam trams ran from Cogra to Sans Susie. This steam tram is being prepared for service at the depot at Sandringham 
on the shore of Botany Bay. The steam trams could mount a good turn of speed, hence the term shooting through. This tram is in the Princess Highway near Cogra. Rocky Point Road. The steam trams are about to be replaced and a well-wisher contributes a bunch of flowers. Rocky Point Road again, outbound nearing Sans Souci. A second track intended for electric trams but never used is on the left. Instead of being electrified, the Cogra steam tram service was replaced by trolley buses in 1937. The last day of the steam trams was marked by large crowds and heavy loads. Leaving Cogra, the trams took a run at the grade in Grey Street. Premier Stevens cuts the ribbon to inaugurate the trolley bus service. passengers board for one of the first trips. Another new development in 1937 was the Silver City Comet, the first air-conditioned diesel train in New South Wales. It was filmed on a trial run from Sydney to Moss Vale. Sydney's very last steam tram ran from Parramatta to Red Bank Wharf. The fragment that follows is the only known film of this historic line. A tram is seen in George Street near Gasworks Bridge. Owned by Sydney Ferries Limited, this line closed in 1943 and steam trams ended 64 years of service to the people of Sydney. The Second World War led to the first employment of conductresses and the newsreel that follows shows them being trained in 1942. Note the blast protection and brown out features applied to the trams, windows partly boarded up and bumper bars painted white. Tram conductresses go to school. To these girls all is fares in love and war. So while the husband's away, the wife earns pay. To take on this job, these girls have got to learn a lot of this, about a lot of that, with a lot of tests. The eyesight test, to enable them to read at 20 feet, don't spit, penalty two pounds. They practice at thumbing the fruppances in case they give the correct change, and out to work they go. Officials are delighted with the rapid progress the girls have made. And now a piece of string, a little wheel, and a piece of wire. The idea is to pull the string so that the little wheel with the wire on it, with the string on the wheel where the wire with the wheel under the string has the wire on it beside the little wheel, the little... Ah, that's better. The wire is on the wheel. A few pointers on swinging the points by one who knows how and why, but not when. Look, girls, it's easy. You put the snop toggle into the burzen floch and hook it around the pushik. You pull on the millpiece and nearly fall flat on your back platform. Ah, here, look. Uh, somebody else try. Ah, ah, the hand that can thread the needle can also rock the instructor. It's as easy as dragging your husband over the doorstep on a Saturday night. And so they're on the job. Women trammies who work the same shifts and hours and earn the same wages as the men. Girls who can tell you in no uncertain manner just where you get out. Now we'll see trams in the city in the 1930s or late 1920s. Railway Square. Elizabeth Street at Market Street. The 
the ladies are headed for the shops. A pair of jumping jacks turns out of Pitt Street, headed for Central Railway. And a tram leaves Central for the quay, crossing a bridge used by trams today. Here are scenes taken in about 1951, York Street. Martin Place, Elizabeth Street at St James Road, Railway Square, Elizabeth Street at Goulburn Street. The Town Hall. King's Cross with trams going to Watson's Bay. And headed towards us, a trolley bus bound for Potts Point. Trams at Milsons Point Station. George Street at Park Street. And at Martin Place. Queen Square. In 1958, this tram in Elizabeth Street crosses Martin Place. And turns into Hunter Street. Phillip Street. Circular Quay and some maintenance work on the overhead wiring. George Street at Wynyard. and we are aboard a tram stopping at King Street. Railway Square again. Not only have the trams gone, but motor vehicles have changed greatly in 50 years. Another view of Railway Square with trams running parallel. Those closest to us are headed for George Street. Those further away are bound for the eastern suburbs. Police on point duty were very busy before the age of traffic lights. Now we'll look at each of the tram routes in turn. Most of the film that follows was taken in the 1950s, the last decade of tramway operation. Trams to Watson's Bay used King Street to reach their city terminus at Erskine Street Wharf. The building at right on the corner of George Street has changed little since cable trams passed it in the 1890s. Today it is occupied by Darrell Lee Chocolates and makes an attractive sight against the modern city skyline. The intersection of King and George Streets was the busiest in Sydney with a tram crossing in peak hours every eight seconds. King Street alone had 90 trams per hour in peak periods. Queen Square, work is in hand for the cutting back of the line to this point, which took place in December 1950. The Queen of Earthly Queens gazes down 
contemplating her forthcoming encirclement by a tramway loop.